I asked you guys on YouTube to send me in some questions for a quick Q&A, so let's do an Ask Me Anything. Starting with our first question from Deezers991. Why did you start YouTube? And more specifically, why Madden? I've been making YouTube videos, been on or around YouTube since like 2009, 2010-ish. I started making Call of Duty videos, gameplay commentaries, tried to figure out a way to separate myself from everyone who's doing exactly the same thing. I had like the four-year-old voice, squeaky, super, you know. What's up, guys? Blaze Reflex here. And so I decided to learn how to edit. I was editing montages. I was doing editing tutorials. That was kind of my way to fizzle my way into the community and try to make a name for myself. I built up a channel of like 6,000 subscribers or so at the time, which was, you know, 2010. That was like crazy. And for me, you know, it was, it was a huge personal accomplishment. I just love to do it, man. I love to create videos. I love video games. And I completely taught myself how to edit from scratch from YouTube alone. There's never been any paid courses or instruction, no academic institutions or anything like that. I just saw it effects, wanted to learn how to do it, practice, 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 learn new effects, and just repeated that cycle over and over and over again. And I just loved it. Through the years, you know, I went off to school. I stopped making videos for a while. I was like, okay, this isn't going anywhere. I need to make money at a job. I need to focus on school. I focused on like friends and the social aspect of school. And that was super fun for a while, but graduating, working in the real world, having like a nine to five corporate job, I could not stand it. So I came back on YouTube as just a little bit of a hobby thing to give myself something extra to do. And then the game that I was playing at the time was Madden. I, why specifically Madden? I just love football, dude. Like, I absolutely love it. I watch every second of every game I possibly can. I can't get enough of football. I think like a lot of people who play Madden, probably the 90% of people who play Madden, they play it because they love the sport. They don't necessarily play it because they love the game itself. And that's kind of where I came from too. Got addicted to Ultimate Team for a while. I was making like coin making methods and stuff like that on YouTube. Nothing was really ever working. But I just enjoy doing it. I like sharing that information. I knew videos weren't going to go viral, but it's like, hey, I can make a little bit of extra side income. And COVID hits. I have some extra time where I'm not commuting to, to and from work. Start like live streaming when we're locked inside on Friday nights because I can't like go out or do anything and kind of continued to blossom from there. And then right when I was about to kind of call it quits and give up, I put my all into a video building a God Squad from scratch, like gave it everything I had. The video blew up and then that just turned into like, okay, I guess I'm a full-time YouTuber now and that's awesome. So I just always love YouTube, dude. I want to continue to do it in some aspect, even if I'm not behind the camera, you know, for the rest of my life. Isaac IS5SI said, what made you want to continue to try? and never give up at the beginning when you had nobody. Just because I love the platform itself and I love the process of making videos. Sometimes it can get monotonous. Sometimes either, you know, I don't want to record or I don't want to edit. Seeing what happens when I have an idea to seeing the final product at the end, I just, there's no better feeling in the world to me of like bringing something together and trying to tell a story, trying to carve that into something interesting and engaging and then getting feedback from you guys, seeing you guys love it or hate it. You know, sometimes that sucks, but I just, I love the process. And so when I didn't have any viewers or any people watching, like I did it because I genuinely just love to make videos. And I always had a goal of being a YouTuber. I just never really expected it to happen. But here we are today, which is just still crazy for me to say. How did you get the job to become MMG's editor? from Dak Season 9716. A lot of people don't know this. I did edit for MMG for a while. When he just tweeted out that he needed an editor, I submitted some of my videos and the work that I had already done. And that's kind of the best way to get hired by anyone is to they say like dress for the job that you want. Like for me, it was create videos for the job that you want. So I was already doing my own stuff on my own Madden videos. And I was like, this is the top of the line, you know, the biggest creator in Madden on YouTube. And I already have Madden videos that I've put a lot of work into and I'm proud of that I've edited. So I just submitted those videos right away. I ended up getting the job from there, did like a trial edit for him and put my all into that. I spent like 20 hours on one trial edit video and the footage had already been released. Like he already released that video. So I knew this was never going to see the light of day. Only person that was going to watch this was MMG. And I stayed up all night. I mean, I did everything I possibly could, learned all these new effects, made sure they were perfect and he liked it. So from there, you know, he started giving me wheel of mutts for a while. I think this was Madden 22. From there, it just kind of blossomed. We worked together for a while until, you know, my channel started growing and then I kind of focused on my own thing. And then he ended up finding new editors and that was totally cool. It was a great time working for him. You know, I learned a lot just mostly about like the commitment and drive and consistency it takes on YouTube because the guy daily uploads basically and has for like the last decade, which is just crazy in my mind to think about because I obviously upload like once or twice a week, maybe sometimes not even that. And you know, I'm a full-time YouTuber. So I put a lot into videos and SKR YouTube one says, is Caleb Williams going to be a dog? Uh, is the Pope Catholic? Is water wet? 
Next question. Spark underscore Query. So where do you guys get these names, man? Says, are you going to play NCAA 25? Absolutely. Next question. Yes, of course, I'm going to play NCAA 25. I'll be posting it on my main channel. So make sure you're subscribed to both Kinney and more Kinney because I'm going to be pumping out videos like crazy for that. I'm working with an editor myself. So I want to increase the output so you guys get more Kinney content in your life. And let me know what you want to see from that game because I've got some great ideas that I want to do, but I'm always open to audience feedback based on what you're interested in, based on what you guys want to watch. Orez Water says, how did you and your wife meet? Not wife yet, just fiance. We got engaged in the beginning of April. We met on Hinge. So it's a classic love story in the 21st century. I've been going on a lot of first dates. None of them are going over well. Shot her a message. We had matched or responded to her message. She messaged first, actually. Went on a date. Ended up going on a second date. Went home for Christmas break. Came back. Continued dating. And it kind of blossomed from there. So there's obviously a lot more to our love story. But we might just save that for another day. HCR Productions with the most upvoted post on this community post said, Are you still doing the beating Madden with $0 series? Yes, absolutely. These videos take time. I also don't want to record every single day because I want new challenges to come into the game. I want new cards to come into the game. So I want each episode to feel different. So I'm not just only playing online or only doing solo challenges. And I want like, new cards and new opportunities and, and level up opportunities in the game. So I'm trying to do like one every couple weeks, but we will be continuing that until NCAA comes out or until I beat the game, whichever happens first. But yes, I am for sure still doing that series. I also asked over on Twitter and uh, my boy Civil says height. I am seven foot three. Just kidding. I'm five foot one. Just kidding. I'm actually five foot eight. I don't know why I thought that would be funny. I'm not even going to cut that, but it wasn't funny. I'm five foot eight. Josh Prem said, what will be better? College football 25 or Madden 25? I think the anticipation buildup of College Football 25 and how fresh it's going to feel is going to lead to that being the quote unquote better game. I'm personally more of a NFL fan than a college football fan. I love them both. I watch them both religiously. But at the same time, I think just the 10-year drought of college football is making it a more anticipated and hopefully better game in the end. I'm leaning towards College Football 25. And Michael said, what game will sell better, College Football 25 or Madden 25? I think College Football 25 will not sell better. This is probably a super hot take because of all the anticipation and buildup, 10-year drought. I get it. Super hyped game. I just think, generally speaking, there is a larger fan base for the NFL than there is for college football. And I don't think people quite understand how many copies Madden sells every year. And I know it's not the only football game anymore, and that is definitely going to contribute to sales, but packaging them together is still going to help Madden out. And I think in the end, Madden will have sold more copies, but I think there will be much more attention and hype around college football 25. That's just kind of my hot take prediction. I could very well be wrong and I would be okay with that. Seth Low UZ9ZV says, how or why did you choose the Bears? I am a Chicago native, not the city. I was born in the Northwest suburbs, but I've always been a Chicago sports fan. I live and breathe Bears football. I live and breathe Cubs baseball, Bulls basketball, Blackhawks hockey, although I'm not a huge hockey fan. I just have always loved Chicago teams. I've always had an allegiance to them. I've never really strayed from that except for like, I played for the Twins when I was in Little League. Like, I liked the Minnesota Twins for a year. That kind of thing when you're eight years old and you're wearing the cap and you love that. But I think I really came into my NFL fandom around 2006 when the Bears were in the Super Bowl against the Colts. Of course, they lost, but that even, like, took it to another level. That's when I, like, fell in love with not just the sport, but the Bears themselves. But even up until then, I was always a Bears fan. We were a Bears household. I was raised by Bears fans. And so that will just continue on through... Hopefully my kids, they better be Bears fans because if they are Packers fans, it's like a way to stick it to their dad. That's going to be a huge problem for me. Rich Prods says, what was your aspirations when first starting YouTube? I always wanted everything that seemed to come with it, which was like the notoriety and fame. And that definitely changed as I got older and matured a little bit and saw how hard it actually is. And then it kind of molded into this like love and passion for creating videos. And that stuck through with me. Like... I dabbled with vlog content, like the midnight releases of games. I would vlog that and that was super fun. And like, I still look back on those videos sometimes when I'm really bored today. Like, dang, that was such a cool time in my life. And to be able to capture that and look back on it. And in, in 50 years, I'll still be able to do the same thing. Like my kids will be able to see what I was like when I was, you know, 15 years old, 16 years old. And I think that's really cool. So I love the idea of like logging your life and logging your journey. And I also love the concept of creating a video start to finish and seeing the final product and being like, wow, I'm really proud of that. I really like how that turned out. And then I also like the freedom that being a YouTuber gives. You. I don't answer to any boss. I don't even answer to like clients. Like I don't have to worry about selling and worrying about a customer. Like I worry about what you guys want to watch. And I want to make the best video for that. But that's like an intrinsic 
intrinsic motivation to do so. It's not because I feel like I have to, or I'm going to go out of business or anything like this, like the schedule and the freedom that it gives me. And then the financial freedom, of course, that comes along with that, with being successful in the space. Something I don't love is the stress that comes along with it. Not just from the potential burnout of like how hard I work. I work way harder now than I ever did when I was working for a Fortune 500 company. And once five o'clock would hit, I'm shutting off and I, I don't care about anything that's happening at my job. I'm always wearing my YouTuber hat and there's a lot of stress with that. Always opening up to see how videos are doing, reading comments to see what you guys think of them. So there's a lot of stress that comes with that. And during the summer, you know, obviously like you're making a lot less money. So you worry, will will viewership ever come back? Do people not like me anymore? Are people going to watch my videos when the new games come out? Is my, is my career over? Do I have to get a job now? That kind of thing. But kind of just riding this like for as long as I possibly can because I love it and I always will. So I don't think I want to be the biggest YouTuber on the planet. That's not my goal. I don't even know if I want to be the biggest batting creator on the planet or football creator on the planet. But to me, I want to create a sustainable life to, you know, build enough wealth to pass along to my family so we don't have to worry about it. We have that financial freedom. But also to continue have to have the creative freedom for me to do what I enjoy and not feel like I'm forced to do videos that make me miserable just for the sake of like views, 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 and money. It'll continue to change throughout the years, but that's kind of where my head's at now and where it was when it started. After reading other questions, I wanted to ask you some more thoughtful and significant questions. When you wake up in the morning, do you dread the day or do you welcome it? Explain your reasoning. There are some days I absolutely dread it, but those are way fewer and far between the days that I, I wake up and I, I really enjoy what I do. And there are some videos that I enjoy recording more than others just for, because the general sake of them is like more fun or more interesting to me versus the videos that I know you guys want to watch and you love those and I want to make them so that you can watch them. And sometimes you'll see in my videos, man, I rage like Madden can be a very frustrating game. There are days when I do not want to hop on and record or there are days where I'm like, I know I have like 14 hours ahead of editing ahead of me and that is daunting. But a lot of times it's like a body in motion stays in motion. So you get started and getting started is the hardest part. And you realize, you know, six hours has gone by and you're like, dang, like I was really invested in that. I'm, I'm really liking how the section's turning out. That makes me excited for this section. And I think one way that I try to keep myself motivated is by trying new things. So if I just get in a monotonous cycle where it's like record, same editing, same thumbnail, upload, I get bored with it and I'm not challenging myself. So it's like, hey, can I do like a cool montage segment here? That's like totally different from anything I've done. It takes more time and maybe the views don't skyrocket because of it. But I know for me, I'm pushing myself to learn new things or try new things. And that's really what keeps me motivated to continue to up the quality of my content. And for me now, it's like increase, increasing the consistency of my content. So working with an editor, trying to increase and scale my business a little bit is, ex is an exciting new challenge. But I really do, generally speaking, like welcome the day and I love it. I would you describe your channel and the meaning of football to your future kids? What emotions come to mind? Dang, who wrote this question, man? I would describe my channel as an exciting way to appreciate the NFL through gaming and the meaning of football to my future kids. The meaning of football, it's tough because I played a lot of sports. Football was just never a sport that I played, but I think the meaning of football, generally speaking, is kind of similar to other sports, you know, especially as your kid, teaching you discipline, teaching you that things don't come overnight. You have to be consistent over time and dedicate a lot of your free time to this. You know, you're not partying, you're not hanging out with friends as much. You're going to practice and you're going to bed early and you're waking up and you're, for me, I was a swimmer. So it was like getting in cold water at 5 a.m. or when I played baseball, like the summer workouts that are two a days or weightlifting or any of that kind of stuff. Like you're doing things that you don't always want to do, but you're doing it because you have goals in mind and things that you want to work towards. And it's really just consistency over time that gets you there. Like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That saying is so cliche and so stupid, but at the same time, it's so true, man. It relates to YouTube too. Like YouTube doesn't happen overnight. There are people that of course like will blow up or have viral videos overnight, but having that consistency to do it for years is a whole different beast. And I learned that pretty quickly once my channel blew up. I had like this crazy run and yeah, I was getting 400,000 views every video. And I'm like, dang, I'm on top of the world. No one can touch me. And then the next summer comes and suddenly I'm getting 10,000 views a video. And I'm like, okay, my career is over. It's done. But I, I stuck through it despite like the huge mental battle of thinking like I was a one hit wonder or one year wonder whatever it is. And so it's trying to stay consistent over time and try to do this for as long as I possibly can and make great videos. And I think that's kind of what football teaches you too. It's like consistency and discipline and the emotions that come to mind are just like stress and anxiety. And then just gratitude, I think is, is really the main thing because I try to 
remind myself how grateful I am to be in this position to do this every day. And sometimes when you're in the micro of the day-to-day -day routine, it's easy to forget that. But when you take a step back and realize like, dude, I'm living my childhood dream and that is so freaking cool. So it's being grateful for that in the end. So focus on your channel where you want it to be or is it where it is the most convenient? I think it's a little bit of hybrid of the two. Like I would love to do more IRL content because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. And although I get stressed and anxious while filming IRL content, I'm always happy with the final product and I think I created something that's different and unique. I don't want to only rely on that. Like I still love video games and I still do at its very core love Madden and I love the NFL. So I would love to be a bit more of a hybrid of doing like IRL based stuff and stadium tours and hopefully things with athletes in the future. But at the same time, I love the gaming focus and I love being grounded in gaming because that's why I got started even way back in the day that's what i got started doing madden like right now and i, I definitely want to stick with that so a little bit of both do you actually believe your answer to the question above or is something you tell yourself and i'm pretty firm on what i believe and then they followed that with this was written by someone you know i have no idea who this was so shoot me a text or a twitter dm or something because i would love to know who actually wrote this comment it's pretty interesting what's your favorite irl football memory uh, i wasn't a game that i was at but i feel like one of my earliest football memories was watching devin has to return the kick in the super bowl i was 10 years old at the time it's 2006 2007 so i was like 10 and that was when i i was jumping off the couch screaming that was my first like personal invested truly excited moment i also remember in that same season when they beat the cardinals after coming back and they didn't score an offensive touchdown that game but i went to bed early that night because i thought the game was over i woke up the next morning and my brother is sitting in the kitchen and he goes dude did you see the bears game last night i was like i know they got their butts kicked and he goes no they won they came back and i could not believe it and we watched the highlights and of course denny green they are who we thought they were like one of the most infamous press conferences of all time kicks over the podium so good but I think that was, that's like the first season, first times where I really truly created lifelong memories of where I where I was, what I was doing, and what I was thinking during those mo football moments. IRL moment was going to the college football national championship to watch Clemson, although they lost to uh, Joe Burrow and LSU that year, but it was still just an insane, insane game, insane memory, insane trip. Got to spend it with my dad, which was super cool. But Drop more questions down below. The more questions I get, the more often we can do these. So ask me anything in the comments down below. Subscribe if you're not. Subscribe to my main channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.